What's up guys? Welcome back to another uh, Dark Souls 1 lore through. Uh, this is uh, another voiceover. Um, so, <clears throat> so today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take care of a couple of loose ends um, before we go to the Duke's archives. Um, we found the uh, Dark Moon Seance Ring in the catacombs and uh, read that that had something to do with uh, the Dark Moon Blades, which we know is here in Anne Orlando. Uh, we don't know that necessarily, but I know that. Um, so basically we're going to um, go to this spiral platform that we can move and uh, we'll move it down one more level there's three positions you can have with this whole thing it's kind of cool but yeah, the top uh, goes to the painting uh, and the painting guardians. And the bottom goes down to a new place, which we haven't been to in this playthrough. So it's right kind of underneath the area where we fought Ornstein and Smo. I mean, this area is under the, those stairs and the great cathedral and all that stuff. There is a, a statue of Gwyn here, and an interesting ring, Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. Uh, we can see here that there's like tombstones around, um, this is some sort of tomb, um, and there's also images of silver knights surrounding it, some nice uh, stained glass. Um, but there is a little trick with all this, uh, although I think I'm going to read the sun's firstborn ring first. Lord Gwyn's firstborn, who inherited the sunlight, once wore this ancient ring. Lord Gwyn's firstborn was a god of war, but his foolishness led to a loss of the annals and rescinding of his deific status. Tanae, even his name is not known. So this is a classic uh, mistranslation, uh, and it's led to a lot of confusion for a lot of people, because it says his foolishness led to the loss of the annals, but uh, I believe what is only meant by that, and there's another description where uh, the sunlight metal, I think, just means that they removed the Lord Gwyn's firstborn from the annals of history. They just, re he didn't exist. He didn't become, they removed his deific status, said, you're not a god anymore, and now we don't know his name. We just know that he was a god of war. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we, uh, we learn who the firstborn is in the series eventually, not in this game, uh, definitively. Um, but, um, what I, what I wanted to note here was that, um, as we're going to see in a little bit, that Gwyn is not the one that, uh, that rescinded his deific status and lost, and, <laughs> and, uh, removed him from the annals of history. Um, it was probably the gods that still lived in Arlando. Uh, could even be like Gwendolyn or Guinevere or something like that who were basically running things once Gwyn left. Um, there's there's an item in the next room where we'll see that um, he placed um, something on, it, on Gwyn's tomb. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, so you, you wear the Dark Moon Seance Ring and Gwyn's image, statue, whatever, disappears and, uh, and a path is 
uh, opened up. This is kind of interesting. There's a fog gate, but Hold. this is the tomb of the great Lord Gwyn. Tarnished it shall not be by the feet of men. If thou art a true disciple of the dark sun, cast aside thine eye. Hear the voice of mine self, Windelin, and kneel before me. So yeah, this is the tomb of the great Lord Gwyn. Um, and this is Gwendolyn, I mean, so we've been hearing about Gwendolyn uh, as being the only god remaining in Anor Londo, and here we're meeting him in the flesh. Um, and this is how you become a dark moon and, uh, and fight with the dark blades, or the blades of the dark moon. Um, we're going to learn more about... Uh, Gwendolyn, once we beat him, we're going to fight him, but uh, for now. O oh, disciple of the dark sun, thou hast journeyed far. Hear my voice, if thou shalt swear by the covenant to become a shadow of Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere, a blade that shall hunt the foes of our lords, then I shall protect thee. Safeguarding thy person with the power of the dark moon. Very well. Now thou art a blade of the dark moon, hunteth the enemies of the lords by the power of the dark sun. So yeah, we got a few items there. Um, let's check them out. So we got the blue eye orb. We obviously had the black eye orb. And we can get the red eye orb if we go through uh, Koth's Covenant. But uh, this is the blue eye orb. Uh, and it kind of does the same thing as the red eye orb. Well, and the dark, uh, the dark black eye orb. But this one is only invading people that are guilty and rack up sin which you can do by being in God's Covenant or by killing NPCs or, you know, a various amount of things. Um, but yeah, so this is, we are now a dark, a blade of the Dark Moon and we can invade guilty people if we'd like. <clears throat> um, invade the world of player in the Book of the Guilty. These mystical orbs are granted to blades of the dark moon knights who serve the dark sun, Gwendolyn, so that they may serve the gods in meeting out vengeance. We had kind of read about these earlier when reading Velka's, um, like reading the Book of the Guilty and stuff like that. So they are related a little bit. Then we got the Covenant Ring. Ring granted to those bound by the dark moon blade Covenant. <clears throat> Gwendolyn, all too aware of his repulsive, frail appearance, created the illusion of a sister Guinevere, who helps him guard over Anne Orlando. An unmasking of these deities would be tantamount to blasphemy. So, yeah, I mean, that states it very clear right there. We've seen it for a while now, but that's, he created an illusion of a, his sister Guinevere in uh, Anne Orlando. That is not her there. And I think there's other things that may be an illusion as well. Um, also, Gwendolyn has a weird appearance. We'll see once we go into the um, fog wall. He has like snakes for, for feet. Um, and uh, I have a theory on this, which uh, I'll get to later. So. But anyway, we're just gonna break it and go right in. What foolishness. Why would a blade of the dark moon trespass it upon the great lord's tomb? Mark the words of mine self, Gwendolyn. Thou shalt not go unpunished. Yeah, so Gwendolyn speaks in the old tongue as well. It should be noted. 
Um, so yeah, he also, he's so powerful with his illusion that he's able to, uh, like, change the physical form of this area. It should be also noted here that, um, he uses, uh, yeah, you can see his legs are snakes. They kind of look like the snakes in the forest uh, of Darkroot Garden. He's also using sorcery, um, which, you know, is not typically what gods and, and followers of the gods do. Um, they usually perform miracles. Um, also, he seems to be... Yeah, his, uh, his magic attack can get overwhelming. Um, I was trying to just dodge it quick, but I, uh, I fell victim to his, uh, stacking right there. But we're just right here, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but what I was saying is he also looks like he might use an Avalon. I don't know if he, like, he doesn't physically look like it's an Avalon. I don't know. I, I guess I don't know the Avalon in this what game. Foolishness. So I just skip that. Uh, I don't know what the Avalon looks like in this game, and I don't know if he looks like he has it, but it is interesting. Um, he's he's dealing with sorcery, he's deformed, and he uses an, an item that we find in the Duke's archives. Um, so I have a theory about uh, Gwendolyn, but... Um, I don't know many people that share my opinion, or I haven't really seen people talk about it, so I don't know if I'm way off or not, or if there's some text to prove me wrong or whatever. But I like how uh, Gwen Gwendolyn basically like waits here uh, once you arrive. It's like if you can disappear, why wouldn't you just do it right away when uh, someone is threatening you? No, I think that's just a, uh, a ball of some sort. Swathed in dark, an eternal curse upon thee. So the form appears back to normal, and we're back at the doorway now. So. So yeah, let's go look at, uh, let's read the soul quick. Uh, as I say, we'll learn more with the garb later. Soul of Dark Moon Gwendolyn, god of the dark sun and guardian of deserted Anne Orlando. Special being and special souls. Use the soul of Gwen's last born to acquire many souls or create a weapon, which we're going to do. Um... But yeah, now we can come here and see the tomb. Um, Lord Gwyn's tomb. I mean, we know that he uh, left Anne Orlando to extend the first flame, so I'm not 100% sure on this. Uh, maybe it's a tomb in his honor. Maybe people were told something else that he had died here. Um, but yeah, this is after Gwyn left, that this was created underneath his home. Uh, his his hall or whatever. So there's uh, the brass set here in this uh, chest over on this side, and we can read about the Dark Moon Night S that wears this, and learn more about her. Um, Helm of the Dark Moon Night S, uh, Fire Keeper of Anne Orlando. After becoming undead, she visited the dark sun Gwendolyn at the mausoleum of the stair de spiral depths, became a blade of the dark moon, and assumed the flame-keeping duty. She received this helm, which hides her hideous form and helps her hunt the guilty. So yeah, she did what we did. She became undead, she got through Sin's Fortress, she got to this mausoleum, uh, and became a blade of the dark moon. She got awarded a bra uh, brass set and um and it hides her hideous form uh which uh 
you know, we said that all fire keepers have some sort of deformity, and this is, I don't know in what case, she, you know, she has it, but, um, it hides it from whatever, so you can't see it. Also, she was created, uh, a fire keeper was made, which is, again, something that we see over and over again, and, um, you know, it's very interesting, um, which has far-reaching impact for stuff in future games. Um, but anyway, uh, now there's a nice miracle up here, which you get if you level up in the Blades in the Dark Moon, but I think this is kind of like the storeroom for um, the Dark Moon Covenant and stuff um, for Gwendolyn, whatever. Um, but there's the miracle sunlight blade. If I had enough uh, faith, I would, I would, <laughs> I would be doing this. I love this miracle. Thirty faith though. Miracle willed by Lord Gwyn's firstborn. Boost right weapon with rays of sun. The power of sunlight manifested as lightning is very effective against dragons. When the eldest son was stripped of his deific status, he left this on his father's coffin, perhaps as a final farewell. So that's the that's the line right there. Um, he was stripped of his deific status, and then he left the miracle on his coffin. I mean, it doesn't sound like you know, Gwyn stripped him of the deific status. I mean, let's say he did even, and that led to his death somehow. Why would he leave this on his coffin if he like had any ill will towards his uh, father? Um, so to me, I think this is kind of proof that he was stripped of his deific status through the other gods that lived here, uh, possibly his brother or sister. And then this chest is empty. Um, I just think it was probably holding another brass set, and it's in the brass set is the actual one that the Dark Moonitis is wearing. Um, there was just another one in here, uh, possibly for us, um, uh, although there's no, <laughs> there's no way in the game to, like, get it through the Covenant, I don't think. But anyway, um, so, now that we've killed Gwendolyn, and there are no gods remaining in it, Orlando, um, we're gonna come back up here and um, I should have probably just warped but we're gonna go pay Gwen Guinevere a visit uh, now that we know that she's a uh, um, illusion and it's not actually her um, it is funny too because you know we click we kill we kill Gwendolyn and uh, and she doesn't have anything to say about that. She doesn't know. I mean, it is interesting that, you know, the the illusion continues after Gwendolyn's dead. I guess it's, I don't know exactly how things work, but, I mean, that's what happens. And, um, and she, 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 I just saw this movie recently that had a similar character in it. Um where it was a fake character mimicking a real character and it like only had a few lines it could say um and so you could easily identify it as fake and i think that's kind of the way guinevere is um you know it's like she doesn't have anything to say about Gwendolyn being dead because she doesn't really have that programmed into her illusion she's not like a living breathing thing so I mean, that's just my thoughts on it. I don't know. Um, maybe it's just a limitation of, of the programming of the game. Getting all the, the little details, the scenarios worked out might be uh, you know, complicated. So, um, yeah, so I'm grabbing a uh, bow so I can actually shoot. Uh, Guinevere.
So yeah, she's just. Thou hast filled the Lord Vessel. Indeed, a worthy successor thou shalt be. My patience was not for nil. I beg of thee, succeed Lord Gwyn and inherit the world's fire. We have only thee. Please, Father's role thou should play. Yeah, so this is just what she said earlier. And, um, now thou shalt go. May thou be one. I don't have any arrows on me. All right. Shoot her right in the chest. I think if she does any damage will kill her. Like one damage would kill her. I saw a guy who was clipping out of the map to kind of look at all the different things, and he accidentally like touched her with his foot, which is you get you deal damage from falling on people like over like one or two points, and uh, he killed her. <laughs> so yeah, um, not only was she a, an illusion here, but we've kind of broken all the illusion, and the sun was an illusion which I suppose makes sense because you know the Sun kind of represents you know the prosperity of the age of fire and the gods and I suppose things are fading and um, you know the fire is fading so I mean they're probably in twilight now so this is interesting there's no more enemies either um, you know, I, I was kind of pointing out that they disappeared, kind of like illusions might. Uh, but instead, um, I just uh, see there is um, a balder knight. And, well, kind of a balder knight. Um, it's not like a hollow, it's like a human. And a Berenique knight. So, you know, it's possible that this is Knight King Rendell and Black Iron Tarkus. I'm not, I don't know like the specifics on that. In other words, I mean, we don't know if this is Night King Rendell or not. Like it may or may not be. That's just the thing. Um, but like, I'm, sh I'm sure, you know, Old Iron Tarkus has a, you know, has a model, you know, when you summon him. So I'm sure, you, you know, someone can match up whether or not the face is looking exactly the same. I just know that Night King Rendell came through uh, Sen's Fortress, and uh, we didn't necessarily find him or his stuff. I mean, we found his Ring of Protection. And then we found Black Iron Tarkus's stuff, uh, but again, phase in and out. I don't know if this is him now, or. I mean, it could just be another Knight's Berenique. It's probably like one that actually did not become hollow but um and i'm not even sure how the uh the illusion broken removes all enemies and leaves them like why were they hidden before in other words um, were we fighting them in any way were they i don't know it's a one-time kill once you kill them they never come back um uh, it should be noted too, the chaos demons are gone. And, you know, it might be that the reason that those looked and acted so different from all the other demons is because they were mem they were remembered incorrectly or, or they were they were given changes with, you know, the illusion that was created. And so it might be that the batwing demons or or similar demons that are chaos demons. Um, looked and acted much closer to the way the other ones acted, um, but that Gwendolyn remembered them wrong or did it wrong or whatever, and that's why they're, they're so different. Anyway, here's the uh, Dark so Moon Nidus. So was it? How dare you produce a blade upon a deity? How did you ever get this far? I shall end your suffering here and now. It is the least that I can do. So yeah, she uses the Dark Moon Blade. But how? This woman is a threat. 
Master Gwyndolin. And we get the Firekeeper Soul, which again she says to me that some there's a process to create a Firekeeper. And it just says at the bottom, her brass armor serves to disguise, disguise this ghastly form. It seems to state there that the humanity writhing in her creates the ghastly form. And so that could be why all, um, all um, firekeepers have some deformity. It's through the humanity that they are a source of or whatever. But yeah, she used the Dark Moon Blade, which is a miracle that you get from the Covenant. And um, that's a nice miracle as well. So we're just... I bought like hundreds of thousands of souls of Twinkling Titanite for him, so that's probably what triggers that. Forge, shining, shining, get shining from Duke. Forge weapons, make shining more. Yeah, that's even his reference to the fact that you, friend, you talk, I no talk, but happy. He gets the Twinkling Titanite from. Seath. We're gonna make some boss weapons, um, and and we'll see how uh, Seath gets the Twinkling Titanite later. Um, but I have like a whole diagram I worked out um, for which weapons I'm upgrading and which I'm gonna make and all this stuff. So, um, first one's the Great Sword of Artorias look at I tried to grab like because you can create two things with each soul and in one case you can create three things I tried to create I tried to create the ones that like gave the best like lore um, although nothing's perfect um, you know the boss summons aren't the biggest source of um, uh, lore uh, necessarily but um, yeah so you know this isn't a 100% playthrough we're, we're not gonna go through and get all the other ones so. but I just tried to grab the best one in the case of the chaos glaive it was six of one half a dozen of the other both were pretty low on new lore so I just made the chaos blade because I might actually use it because it's a katana um, and that's all I think we can do until we get more souls. So yeah, let's let us read the new weapons we've acquired. The Great Sword of Artarius. Sword born from the soul of the Great Grey Wolf Sif. Guardian of the Grave of the Abyss Walker, Knight Artorius. Sir Artorius hunted the Dark Wraiths, and his sword strikes harder against Dark Servants. So yeah, I mean, nothing groundbreaking there. A curved sword born from the soul of Quelag, daughter of the Witch of Isoleth, who was transformed into a Chaos Demon. This blade inherits only the chaotic nature of Quelag and has a unique speckled design. Blade we wielder erodes along with opponents. So yeah, this is another bonus effect for a blade. When you hit someone, you take a little bit of damage. So, um, hence the chaos, the chaoticness, the chaotic nature. Ornstein's spear. Cross spear born from the soul of Ornstein, a dragon slayer guarding Anne Orlando Cathedral. Inflicts lightning damage, effective against dragons. Two handed thrust relies on cross and buries spear deep within a dragon's hide and sends human foes flying. That is probably could have used a once over from a grammar person uh, who spoke English. A weapon from the soul of the Iron Golem. 
guardian of Sen's fortress, who repelled countless heroes who sought Anne Orlando. The gods fused the power of the soul with the great bones of dragons, forming an appropriate core for the giant golem. I mean, this is nothing we didn't know, but it's certainly a bit more details about it. Catalyst born from the soul of the dark sun Gwendolyn, dark moon deity, who watches over the abandoned city of gods, Anne Orlando. Gwendolyn is Gwyn's last born and a legitimate god, but he is also a moon sorcerer, and this one is boosted by faith, not intelligence. So we were talking about that before. He's He is a sorcerer, uh, which is associated with the moon, which is associated with Seath, uh, like the moonlight butterfly and the like. Uh, and he, and this, but he's a god. He is a genuine god, so he, that scales with faith, not intelligence like normal sorcery. Weapon born from the mystical creature of the dark root garden, the moonlight butterfly, imbued with a powerful crystal power, like the butterfly created by Seath the Scalus, can emit crystal light rings. We're going to learn more about that, uh, uh, crystal power um, but uh, <laughs> just doing a little showcase here it's kind of a cool uh, weapon you can uh, fire little circles of light I guess moonlight or whatever I don't know how <laughs> I guess that probably scales with your intelligence or whatever I don't know how good that is I'm sure there's some where you go with Gwendolyn's armor and that and the moonlight spear you can just crank intelligence up to like 60 or something and you can just kill people instantly um, so yeah as this is a voiceover um, I'll say I don't know what I'm going to do next I mean, I remember a couple things that were done, but I'm not sure. I guess, yeah, this is an hour. I, f I feel like we go to Darker Garden because we're about to go to um, the Duke's archives. So I wanted to talk about the crystal golems and the, and the Hydra there. So I'm going to go to the Undead Parish to, to get down to the basin. Um, yeah, and I'm, yeah, Rusted Iron Ring. Yeah, I'm planning on fighting the Hydra. Which I think I died to a couple times, actually. Um, because I get kind of weird positioning and on the... Hydra, and it ends up like being a little bit too far away, and I didn't have any bow equipped or anything, so I end up falling in twice, so I'm going to talk a little bit about things, but uh, feel free to fast forward <coughs> if you just want to get to the next part. So what I'm basically trying to do is, is clear the path so that I can uh, free Dusk from the Crystal Golem, um, which is associated with the DLC. So, um, yeah, I, um, uh, so, it, I guess starting off, we don't know much about Seath at this point, and we don't know much about the Duke's archives or anything. Um, so I'm just kind of, you know, previewing some of this for you if you don't, you know, if you don't know uh, about that stuff yet. So we find crystal golems here, which we um, will we'll find in the crystal forest where Seath is. And um, we also find the Hydra here, um, which... You know, we've seen the Hydras before, but the one we found was in Ash Lake before. Um, you know, besides this one, obviously. Um, the other thing we find in Ash Lake is the clams um, that are on the beach there. 
Uh, and the other place we find clams is uh, in Seath's Crystal Caves, which is where he gets the Twinkling Titanite, by the way. Um, uh, we'll talk more about the clams once we get into Seath's domain. But, um, yeah, I mean, the other thing to keep uh, an eye on here, which we'll, I will talk about once we get into the Duke's archives and we get imprisoned, but um, there is, you know, the, the way that this uh, Hydra attacks with these... Uh, you know, the, the particular ways in which it shoots water, uh, we can see in the, uh, the Duke's archives, uh, and I'll point it out, but it just makes me think in general that Seath has uh, an interest in what's going on here, uh, in Ash Lake, that is, and that, you know, the <coughs> Darkroot Garden, yeah, there's that attack I was talking about. Darkroot Garden, uh, you know, as we'll see in the future, but just as a you know a quick preview. Well, I guess we'll see in this episode. I guess not definitively, but um, Darker Garden is Ulyssa, uh, Ulyssa from the past, um, which is kind of the birthplace of sorcery. Um, so, of course, Seath has interest in Ulysil. Um, he has particular interest in some of the stuff we find in Ash Lake. And he has an interest in the Hydras. And his uh, crystal golems are found here. And yeah. I just think it's interesting. Um, but yeah, there's... Uh, in order to kind of get through the DLC, or get to the DLC, you have to acquire... You have to acquire an item, uh, an item at Duke's archives. So yeah, um, <laughs> last time I fought the Hydra in Ash Lake. Yeah, see, it's positioned really weird. Like, it's kind of far out a little bit, so like I can't get too close. Without, I mean, I'll fall off the edge. Like I'm afraid of that uh, but if I stand like far back where I normally do it starts to you know, shoot the water at me so this is kind of a awkward fight so it's like I try to yeah it's like I almost fell off right there um, but yeah so Um, I just think that it's, you know, evident that Seath had plans to, you know, increase his knowledge of the world and things in the world. Yeah, like, look at this. What am I, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to, I mean, I suppose I can just grab a, an arrow, which I just didn't do and would have saved us all some time. just keep making it worse and worse. And I'm like, stuck. <laughs> I don't really know what to do. It's like, I'm barely falling off each time because its head is basically off the edge, like in order to, yeah, I mean, So I decided to recenter myself and try to go back even a little bit. I guess I don't. I guess right up to it. But yeah, it's yeah. Um. Yeah. So anyway, just you know, see th having interest in you know certain arcane things in the world, and it brings him knowledge um, and 
assists in his experiments um, in some way. Um, it's just uh, an interesting, you know, aspect of the game. He he certainly is a mysterious character, and one that impacts the whole story significantly. Um, from the moment of the first war to uh, today, because as I stated before, and, and we'll get to it in the next couple episodes, but Seath kind of discovered something really important. Um, and unique that kind of breaks all other like he basically finds well, I'll get to it next uh, next uh, episode I don't want to get into all that because I'm going to have plenty of time then to speak about it and, uh, and then I won't have anything to talk about then so yeah um, one thing that I wanted to mention is that so there is a like a a ladder going up um, above to you know to another part of the dark root garden. Um, it leads to a new area which we I haven't really shown, and then it leads to like the area with uh, where the grave of Artorius is, uh, which we did see. Um, I'm not gonna go there. Um, because it's uh, it's got these three cats that are just they're they're overpowered. There's three of them. They roll into you. And it's not a big deal. They're not like hard enemies. It's just there's no lore up there um, besides the fact fact that the cats exist. Maybe um, so. Yeah, the only thing about them. The uh, crystal golem actually got killed by the hydra, right there, uh, which I want to talk about in a second. But yeah, they're they're pretty much the Alvina cats, like the cat that Alvina is, and um, so yeah, there was multiples of those running around. It is interesting because when we go to Ulusil in the DLC, there are no cats, so I don't know if that was just an oversight or what, but. Um, so, um, yeah, so the, so I think it's kind of interesting that, uh, I mean, we talked about it actually a little bit, that, um, the, uh, the Hydra can do damage to the other enemies in this game, and to me, they... I mean, I don't know that that's, like, hugely important or anything. It's just that, you know, it, it kind of lends it to be that, like, the Hydras are, like, different. Different than kind of other things. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say. Um, or, like, if that's at all important at all. But, I mean, it is certainly interesting that, like, Oh, weird. Huh. There's a... There's some weird audio underneath this. This is largely uh, not that important. Uh, well, basically, I mean, there is some of Dusk speaking, so if we completely screwed up the whole audio here, then... You know, this will just be a weird episode. Uh, it sounds like it started over uh, somehow. Anyway, there's me dying again. Yeah, I wonder where this is, <laughs> what sound I'm hearing is. Um. Anyway. Um. Yeah, this is this is a rambly section because there's not much to uh, there's not much to talk about while I keep dying <laughs> to the Hydra.
Yeah, what is that sound? Oh, is this... Am I somehow going back to get inward? Did it just jump? Huh. All I'm trying to say <laughs> about this stupid fucking Hydra is that, you know, the Hydra can attack enemies, and I think that that might kind of indicate that it's a different type of enemy. Um, but I don't know, it can still attack the clams, which seem to be of its ilk too, so I don't know if it's hugely significant in any way, but... Um, It's cool. I think all video games should be sandboxes. I mean, it would. Pro it's probably you know it leads to better game design because you know if if all enemies can hurt each other from like friendly fire or whatever, you know it. Um, I'm just <laughs> nervous that whatever audio is playing is gonna like start talking. Uh, yeah, you know what it is? It's the beginning of the episode. That's what that turn. It was the is the spiral. <laughs> Look, it's <laughs> I'm probably the only one that hears this, and the the regular audio is playing. So, I guess I'll just try to ignore it. Um, but um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying. So look, looking at this crystal golem, he's got like a big crystal like on on his right shoulder. Appears on our left. I should have maybe pointed it out earlier. Um, and then there's there's a different colored golems, and there's a gold golem. And uh, and that one can house people, and we actually find in a couple of cases. Um, where, you know, there's people trapped in them, including at the end of this episode, although I know everything sounds screwed up, so I don't know what we're going to get here. So, third time's a charm, by the way. <laughs> um, this time I actually killed a Hydra. And I could have cut this out, but I didn't. Oh, there... Okay, when I was converting this uh, to be able to edit this, to put audio over it, I did see an error um, on this episode about... It found an error somewhere. So, okay. So, th so that means to me that the rest of my episodes are fine. It's just that this one got screwed up. Um, so that just means that we're going to probably hear Gwendolyn speaking when we could hear Dusk. Yeah, so you can see I just pull out the... Uh... So yeah, we get a dust crown ring from beating a hydra, which is interesting. And we get a knight set. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to just delete the audio from a certain point on so that we just can't. I'm just going to... So you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, basically, uh, it's just playing Gwendolyn talking and stuff. So this magic crown ring shape, uh, crown shape ring was granted the Princess Dusk of Ulysil upon her birth. The ring stone allows its wearer to cast additional sorceries, but at the cost of half HP. And the knight helm, helm of a lower rank knight. 
nothing significant. So yeah, one of the things here is that um, basically when the hider's there, the golden golem can't be because it um, you'll get attacked by the hydra. So basically, I think you're meant to kill the hydra, go around, come back, and then it's there. You know, because it's for the DLC too, so I think a lot of people's games, the hydra would have been beaten already. So, you know, coming back here, the crystal golem would just be there. You know, it's. I think they tried to hide their DLC and have some fun, um, but it is a little strange that, um, in particular, there's a few things that you have to do here. Um, like they could have just put this somewhere else where, you know, it didn't depend on someone else. But anyway, if we look here, um, yeah, on on its right shoulder to our left. I don't know if you can really see, but there is a person inside of that. He's just slamming down, but yeah, can you see right there? So, um, yeah, we got to kill the, the column and then pop out comes Dusk of Ulisil. And I'll just read her lines because, I mean, I know you can read them too, but. So, so, is it thou who rescueth me? Most gracious, I am deeply obliged. I am Dusk of Ulisil. I cometh from an age long before thine. I cannot stay here for long. So before I disappear, allow me to ask one thing. My home, Ulisil, is the home of ancient sorceries. My hope is to pass this profound knowledge to thee with thine approval. Would this be of assistance to thee? So she speaks in the old dialect again. She's from a time long, long ago. And she wants to share her ancient sorceries, which are mostly lost. So my decision is, hell yeah. Let's do it. And I guess I'm thinking really hard about this decision before I commit. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose I could be talking about sorceries and whatnot. My heartfelt thanks. I am pleased beyond words. Then I shall engrave my, then I shall engrave my own signature. If thou art in need, pray summon me from my signature. It seems that my time is done. May the great flames guide thee. Um, so yeah, I guess that's like another case like Solaire was talking about earlier, about phasing in and out. Um, so I guess she was just part of this world temporarily, and then in order to interact with her again, um, there's that ladder, by the way, that goes up to the to the the cats and stuff up there. Um, so the the way to interact with her moving forward is to like summon her, like the way that she would help in a fight, but she doesn't help in any fights and. That waterfall's waterfall is really awesome too. So yeah, we touch the summon sign, and then she just kind of like appears and then becomes a merchant, um, which is um, unique. What does she have to say? I am Dusk of Uasil. It is an honor to see thee again. I shall follow thine wishes. We learn a proper bow from her. For a very long time I was trapped within the crystal golem. 
From my home I was taken and banished to a plane of distortion. It was there that thou came to my rescue. Long after I had relinquished all hope, so gleeful was I, my faith reneweth. The sorceries of Ulysseel differ from the magic of thine age. It is difficult to explain. Ulysseel's sorceries are, what doth one say? They're somewhat of an approximation. Thine sorceries are more straightforward, negating all but thyself. Dost that not find some fascination in these discrepancies? I love this statement. I really sad that we I lost uh, the the audio due to the encode. But yeah, she's saying that it took me a while when recording this to kind of parse together fully what she was saying, but I think I got it. I think she's kind of saying that you know, the sorceries of her age kind of deal with nature. She says they're an approximation. Um, as if they're trying to approximate nature or some sort of effect of nature. And she said, the sorceries of thine own age are more straightforward um, and they ignore everything except thyself. Our sorceries now only kind of serve the person directly. Um, rather than, you know, we'll kind of see, I go through this again to see what she said. They're an approximation, and then she says about our current ones, Thine sorceries are more straightforward, negating all but thyself. So as we'll see with her sorceries, that um, they're a very different type. They're not, they don't damage, they don't, <laughs> they don't, you know, kind of use souls for anything. I mean, all of our main sorceries kind of deal with souls and the like. Um, and so, uh, yeah, um, I just, I love that little subtle point that she's, that, and, she, and especially the way that she says it, that their sorceries are an approximation, and ours are so much straightforward, which is not necessarily good, because they ignore everything but our own ego. Sorcery catalyst of Lost Land of Ulusil formed by enchanted white bark branches. The white bark boosts sorcery adjustment, but the sorceries of this lost land are gentle and not affected by intelligence. Yeah, none damage, none do anything like where you would need scaling. Uh, white bark uh, or birch branches uh, become important. Uh, in other games. Ancient sorcery of the lost land of Ulusil turns body nearly invisible. Although perfect invisibility is achievable, unachievable due to the risk of dissipation, the caster need only stand still for a moment to blend into environs with astounding camouflage. Ancient sorcery of the lost land of Ulusil cast a bright light upon surroundings. This light-producing sorcery is elementary, but nonetheless demonstrates that achievements in mysticism of Lulusil, such magic has not been developed even in Venheim. Yeah, as you'll see, I mean, all of these are very uh, nature-based. This sorcery is part of everyday life in Lulusil. It effects resemble repair power, which must have found its way into the culture of this lost land. Um... Yeah, I mean, this is all very... Uh, a separate stealth spell from Hidden Body. A, skill, a skilled stealth sorcerer must be aware of his or her surroundings and of which objects are prime candidates for imitation. So yeah, that, if you haven't seen it, turns you into like a, a model of an object that's in the area that you're in. So if you're in, you know, you know, a dark garden you turn into a tree or something and it's you know it's kind of interesting i mean all of these really uh, oh hidden weapon not a simple augmentation making it dependent on the skill of the caster an example of the capacity of ulusil sorceries to control light and there is a very 
key thing to the sorceries of Ulusil. Um, in Dark Souls 2, they talk about light being the thing that repairs, that actually does the repairing of weapons and such when you use the, when you use the sorcery. And we'll look at that in Dark Souls 2. But um, you can see here, besides cast light, all of the um, icons show light, uh, and, like sparkles of light and little outlines of light for everything. So it seems like the sorceries of Ulysso all revolve around being able to modify and uh, control light in certain ways, whether it's to repair, whether it's to... Um, if thou art in need, pray summon me again. I only wish to be of some genuine assistance. May the flames guide thee. So yeah, uh, they all seem, you know, whether it's turning into an object or hiding, going invisible or whatever, it all seems to be manipulations of light, which is so cool. Um, it's probably really how magic would actually work. Um, so anyway, that's all for this episode. Uh, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time.